video it is theory thursday i'm here with the laudo i figured let's talk some music theory please do like subscribe leave me a comment we can uh, have a conversation about this stuff i love that um before i start i am playing this guitar uh this weekend on a couple of shows friday night i'll be with uh with the friends um mike frank and uh steve farrell and bob noble and uh there's a keyboard player um i'm not I'm not familiar with the guy, but uh, I think we should get friendly, you know, so um, we're going to do that. Um, so that's Friday at Circa in High Bridge, New Jersey. Come on out if you're tuning in. Um, and then on Saturday, we are at Van Buskirk Haney Park in uh, Sailorsburg. That's up in the Poconos, PA. Um, I'll be there midday, so like 1 to 3.30 with my band, Funk Norris. We're going to be playing a bunch of uh, me and uh, keyboard players' songs that we have written over the pandemic and, uh, and over the years. So that should be fun. Um, anyways, what I wanted to do today, I was doing this workshop this weekend, um, and a really good question came up. Um, we've talked a lot on this channel about like scales and theory and stuff like that, and she goes, why um why should I even do scales? Like, what if I want different chords than what's in the scale? And that's a really good question. So I said, cool, do you have a chord progression in mind? And this is what she gave me. She gave me E, G, and A. And I love those chord changes. Classic. Okay? Um, but they also, believe it or not, if you spell everything out, it gives you a scale. So let's analyze a little bit. Um, if you don't know how to do this stuff, please go visit me at musicmakerlessons.com. We do all of this stuff in much greater detail. But if I go and spell out the notes that are on each chord, this is an E, E string. This is a B. So if I spell that out, E, B. There's another E, so I can I can skip that. So E and B so far. There's a G sharp, so okay. E, B, G sharp. That's another B, that's another E. Okay, so there's three notes in this chord. E, B, G sharp. Write that down. Okay. G chord, right? I got G, and a B, and a D. There's another G, and there's another B, and there's another G. So, Really, G, B, D. So if I put those together in alphabetical order so far, I get E, then I get G, then I get G sharp, then I get B, then I get D, then I get E. That's almost like its own little scale already. Right? And now I'm kind of getting somewhere. Then I have actually one more chord. If I analyze this one, A. Then we got another E. I can kind of skip that because I've got an E from before, but let's go ahead and log it, right? A, E, another A. Then we got C sharp. And then one more E on top. So, if I spell that out in order, E. There's no F. So this is kind of a weird scale. This is like a scale that we don't really like have in the curriculum at Berkeley. Now, as I edit this video, my Berkeley lizard brain is screaming at me, Mixolydian sharp two, Mixolydian sharp two. Yes, this is also a Mixolydian sharp two scale. Okay, okay, calm down scale people. That's not the point of this video. The point of this video is that you don't need to know that 
to be able to practice chords and chord tones that go together. All right, enjoy. There And it's got like no second, it's like got two thirds. It's got like a minor third and a major third. Or at Berkeley, they might call that sharp two and major three, just so that it makes a full scale. But I mean, really, that's like a, that's an odd sound. That's one that, that doesn't exist in our traditional harmony that we study there. So I think that's a really cool thing. And maybe a reason to not just go and go, okay, I'm going to study my scales and scales and scales and scales and scales and just do scales. Maybe pick apart some chord changes and figure out the notes that work in those. And then you form your own little harmony based off of that. So we get, so far, E and then G and then G sharp and then A from the A chord and then B that comes from your G chord and then C sharp that comes from your A chord again and D that also comes from your G chord and E. So if I play those all in order, right? Let's do it on the high string, so. Right, E, then G, then G sharp, then A, then B comes from the E chord, so. Right, maybe E7 if I like. Right, then C com comes from the A chord. Right, then D comes from the G chord. And then I'm back home to E. So if I were to put that all together, Anyways, you get the idea. Now we have a lot more ingredients that you can kind of play with along with that just really simple chord progression. Um, and that's gotten us to a much, much higher level. Um, I always tell people, it's not about how many scales you can play, it's about what music you can do. So um, if you can already play those chords, all it takes is finding those instances, right? E, where are they? There's one here, and here, and here, and here, here, right? All of those different places, you got E. Then where's all those G sharps, right? Sorry, G, where are all the G naturals? We're gonna do G sharps next, right? And then G sharp. Right, and then A's. Right, then B's. 
C sharps, right? And then D. Don't have a high one of those on this guitar. Um, but anyways, I hope that's helpful. If you can find all of those things, then you'll be able to make melodies and you'll be able to feel a lot more comfortable. The other thing I tell people to do is try and sing it once you figure it out as a scale. And forgive my horrible singing. Do, 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 do. If you can do that, then you can play with it. So much you can do with just that. So um, I urge you, go practice. Pick up your guitar today. Um, pick apart some chords. If those aren't your cup of tea, leave me your favorite chord progressions. Put it in the comment section. We'll break them down. All right, I will see you next... Well, I'll see you tomorrow for Funky Friday, but we'll do another one of these next Thursday. I'll see you then.